Welcome to part four of lecture 19 of aerospace propulsion. Last time we left off with this question of does uh, specifying the working line tell us what the rotational speed of the compressor is? The answer is no. Right? The working line simply tells us how the pressure ratio must vary with mass flow. But we haven't said anything yet about the characteristic of the compressor, except that we've assumed a constant polytropic efficiency. So for some specific compressor, the rotational speed will automatically become the right one to yield the point on the working line that corresponds to a given T0 4 over T0 2. And this has happened because that's the point at which the power will be balanced between the turbine and the compressor. So we need the compressor map in order to predict off design uh, rotational speeds. Um, and it also yields the lower limit of operation, basically where our working line intersects the surge line of the compressor. So here we see that here. Um, so the calculated working line is the uh, dashed, uh, dashed uh, partially dashed line here, the bottom one. Um, we see a deviation in the measured working line, and this comes from uh, the fact that we've used our choked nozzle assumption uh, throughout in calculating this working line. Um, and we see the surge line, and what we see is that the working line moves steadily towards the surge line and sets some lower limit of uh, operation for the compressor. Um, and just to sort of quantify this here, what we see is that we can, uh, when we reduce the pressure ratio from the value of des at design, which is 5.5, um, to say 4.5, um, this reduces the rotational speed um, to about 86% of the design value associated with a corresponding decrease of T04 from 1,063 Kelvin to 900 Kelvin. So the final uh, off-design output for the engine that we care about is, is of course, the thrust. Um, and so we would like to be able to plot thrust versus T0.4 over T0.2. Um, so if we when that, once we know the mass flow rate of air and the jet velocity, and knowing the nozzle corrected flow uh, in the nozzle area and the stagnation pressure and temperature at the nozzle exit, we can get the gross thrust. Um, and what we see is that this is going to decrease rapidly as T0.4 over T0.2 is reduced. So this is normalized to 1 being uh, at the design point for T0.4 over T0.2 being what, about 3.7 at the design point. Um, and what we see is, again, a deviation between sort of if we assume choked behavior or we capture the unchoked behavior. And extending the unchoked behavior, what we see is that the thrust goes down to 0 long before T0.4 over T0.2 becomes 1. So around T0.4 over T0.2 of 1.6 six to 1.7, roughly ex extrapolating here, um, we would get to a zero thrust condition. So this would be essentially the idle point for the engine, um, where you're just adding enough fuel to keep the engine operating, uh, but you're not actually able to produce any thrust. Anything below that would result in unsustained operation, um, and, and basically the engine would shut down. Next time, we'll look at doing this for a two-shaft turbojet engine. And then the lecture after that, um, we'll look at applying a, a, and maybe start looking at turbofan applications. And then we'll look at more advanced turbofan applications in uh, the lecture after that.